So here's the key to understanding why this works. It's a little bit difficult to explain. We have our drums uncompressed that have a very wide dynamic range and they can move up and down. Then we have the signal that goes to the LTD2, the first uh, bus group. And what happens is when, when the sounds are in the lower level section, uh, that LTD2 can compress them and as things uh, change volume, that's having an effect. But as the section gets to the much louder section, the uncompressed drums overwhelm the LTD2. And so they get louder and the LTD2 squashes as much as it can, but there's so much of an uncompressed signal now because they've gotten so much louder that that does not get compressed. So what that's done is allow us to have a dynamic change from the quiet section to the loud section. And then the LTD2 is essentially responsible for our attack and our dynamics of just the quiet section because that's all that it's capable of affecting. But of course we do want a compressor for the loud section. So then when we combine the dry drums and the LTD2 compressed drums and then send those to the distressors afterwards, we can set the distressor to have much less compression or to compress the same amount but at a higher threshold you know, or it has to be louder to actually have an effect or for the distressor to kick in and start causing gain reduction. So we can still compress our drums and have uh, an effect on the attack and the release and essentially the envelope, the shape, the punchiness of the drums, but we can address it at both different levels, uh, volume levels. So what that means is we've got essentially one compressor dealing with the quiet sections and one compressor dealing with the loud sections. The way to do it is blend in a compressor in parallel and then send them both to the final bus compression that will only be set for the loud section. So here's the first section transitioning to the loud section. Tell me why it's still this It keeps me feeling sane While this is nothing more than Two hearts beating tandem What more can be done? Life and love can be so So, <clears throat> now that we've seen all the pieces, let's listen to uh, the entire two sections together with just the regular bus compression. Tell me why it's still this That keeps me feeling sane While this is nothing more than Two hearts that beat in tandem What more can be done? Love and love can be so Here's the two-stage compression. So as you can see, it's a great way to manage the dynamics. You can have control over the quiet parts. You can have control over the loud spots. It's got freedom to move in between, and it, it works great. Um, this doesn't have to be done only on drums. There's no reason you can't do it on other buses simultaneously. Uh, when this was recorded, we did sort of a version of that um, by recording an uncompressed and a compressed vocal to two separate tracks. They're blended together into one output and then 
that output is compressed by another compressor on the vocals. So what you should notice is that the vocals seem pretty locked throughout every section no matter how he's singing and that the dynamics are correct uh, with the way the compression is set. One other thing that's really interesting about this is if you're ever doing multiple songs that were tracked the same way with the same layout and same instruments, you can get a pretty good mix template going. We can jump to another song that's a completely different style and you'll hear that it still works with the same compression. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how to set up and why to use the two stage compression. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. See you at the next one. New love keeps coming over me and you. Now this love keeps you satisfied so I don't at all you. I dropped a half stick halfway through that was playing with one stick.